This video is different from my other videos. This is a boundary video. My name is Renee and I'm currently staying at a women's shelter. If you want to know why I'm here, go back to the very first video that I posted and watch every video so you can get caught up on my story. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Boundaries. We all have them. We all need them. Boundaries are also known as limits, walls, jersey barriers, concrete walls, and um, brick walls. Being able to set your limits and boundaries with people. One of the things that happened to me being at a women's shelter is when I first got here, I had no money to my name and not really having enough food here. They feed you here breakfast, lunch, and dinner. that were in the, it's kind of like a TV dinner type thing. Sometimes they have that, sometimes they have guests that come in and feed you really well. The other day they had a guest come in and gave us um, Vietnamese food and I could have the noodles or the mashed potatoes and things like that. And when I first got here, they told me what I had to do to be able to get food stamps, um, medical and all that. Now, for people that think that the Medicaid and the food stamps are um, abuse of the system, it's not when you actually need them because you're broke, you don't have a job, and you have nothing. So I got them and I qualify. And it saved, it saved me because there would have been nights that I would have gone starving. And I believe there was one night that I was went to bed starving because the first night I was here, I could only eat the carrots and corn. It was maybe about that much. So it wasn't a lot. So when I got, when I first got here, the people around had some, some form of being able to help out. They knew I was vegetarian. They helped me out. I got pizza. They, um, my friends got pizza and they asked if I wanted some. I said, sure. They, they knew I was vegetarian, so they hooked me up. They would give me snacks or extra apples and things to help me out. So I told them when my food stamps come in, I'll hook you guys up, be able to say thank you. And I heard one of them say, um, oh, I would love a milkshake. There's a, play, there's a um, gas station down the street that have really good milkshakes. So I purchased the milkshake for this person and I brought it to them. They asked for it and I bought it for them and I gave it to them. And they went, oh, I can't drink this. And they gave it to somebody else. Luckily, I knew the person who they gave it to, so it was okay. Then I heard the same person say, oh, anytime I go to the mall, I always get a Cinnabon. And at the gas station, they have the place where you, your Cinnabon is made. So I, there was one night where this person was like, can you get me a cheeseburger? And they were completely out of everything. They had no grab and go food. It was all empty. And I told her it was empty. And she went, that sucks. But instead, I got her a bag of chips. I bought her a cinnamon bun and a juice. And I remember her saying, I wanted a juice. Well, I gave it to her. And she was expecting a cheeseburger. But I said, they were completely out. I took a picture of the, the area where they are at. And they were completely wiped out. They didn't even have any cheese. And she was like, oh, I can't eat this. I'm diabetic. But yet, you told me that you every time you go to the mall, you eat a sin bun. So I'm observant. I listen to things and I take notes of what people like, what they don't like. And she complained about it for a moment, but then she ate it later and, and she was grateful for it. I noticed my food stamps were going down more than usual. And it was because I was helping them out. Then other people started to ask, hey, can you hook me up? Can you hook me up? And being a good person that I am, because they helped me out, I hooked them up too. In this place, it's a, a trade and barter and we help each other out. But when it's daily, it was abusive system. And I said, listen, I have to start reserving my food stamps because I only have like $110 left on it. And the reason I need to reserve it until the 4th is when it reboots again. And I told them, unlike you guys, I'm vegetarian. So you guys can have breakfast, lunch, and dinner here and have no issue. 
Unlike me, I have to go see what's for breakfast, lunch, and dinner to see if I can eat it. If there's cereal, I can eat it because I can have milk and cereal, no problem. There's also a banana with it. And there are times where I can't eat breakfast because it has all meat and I'm not interested, I don't eat meat. And the same person today, um, she somehow was able to get money from a friend and she told me to fuck off because I couldn't get her that cheeseburger. And I said, you're mad at me because I couldn't get you the cheeseburger because they were out and I limited my food stamps because I need to reserve it until the reboot. And she told me to fuck off and that I wasn't a real friend. And I said, I'm setting boundaries and limits. And about a couple days ago, I was thinking, you know, if I got a car while I'm here, because that's one of the goals that I, I would like for myself is to get a vehicle before I leave. They're hooking me up with um, an apartment somewhere. And I'm most likely going to be moving probably by August before my birthday. And my goal is to build my business, sell my book, and to get out there in the world and use that money to buy a car. And I said, if I were to get a car here, I would silence myself and not tell anybody I have a car. I could park it in the parking lot down the ways and only go when I know everybody is eating. I would take off if need be. And the reason for it is I just felt it in my heart that if I told them, you know, I have a car, they would say, oh good, now I don't have to take the bus. You can take me where I wanna go. It would be that type of way, just how it was with the food stamps. And I'm preparing for myself to, when I leave here, to exit quietly. I don't wanna make a big deal about leaving here because it, it's been a sanctuary. I feel like I'm on vacation. I feel like I'm being catered to because everything is free here. And I'm very grateful. And it's not abuse of power when you have no car, you have no job, you have no roof over your head, and they're helping you out. I've even volunteered to pick up garbage around here. I picked up over 200 uh, cigarette butts. And for the past five years, I've been learning how to read energy. And it's not crazy, everybody can do it. It's being able to read a room or an environment, read a person, read an animal, read an object. I mean, I went to a confinement store a couple years ago, back in 2017, and I saw a vintage, creepy porcelain doll that had creepy, realistic blue eyes. And I looked at it and said, can I please have my soul back because you just sucked it out of me. And I looked at it and said, I don't know who messed you up or whatever created you, but please don't follow me home. And I had to leave because it creeped me out. That's reading an object. Reading an animal is being able to sense, are they gonna bite you? Are they in a weird mood? And that's all because of my, my dog. My dog is being trained as a service animal for me. And I'm doing it myself. She's trained on anxiety and depression and when things change. And she's acting different because here, I'm not depressed. I don't have anxiety here. I feel safe and secure because their locking mechanism here is there's a gate and then there's different houses here that you get chosen to go into. And there's a key to get into there, then a checkpoint with a, a locked door that you have to be approved of by the people at the desk to go in. Then you gotta go to your dorm, which is, you need a key for that. So I'm locked in four times when I'm here. So I'm safe, I am more safe here than I would be in jail. That's shocking. And I don't feel like I'm in jail because I can come outside, get fresh air, I can leave the property. It's no big deal. It's really amazing being here. And for the past five years, I've been stuck in the house working on myself physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and all in between. And I lost everything because of COVID. And I came here at my, my last option. There was, the day before I came here, I spent the night in a park with my dog. And I was there for 21 hours. Was I scared? No. 
was I prepared? Fuck yeah. I grew up outside. I grew up in nature. So I just felt like it was a day outside and camping outside without a tent. But I did have some form of roof over my head because I brought an umbrella and I found a place to prop the umbrella up so I had a, I had a roof over my head with my dog. So that was, that was being creative and on survival mode. And the funny thing was when I started my new journey back in 2017 of starting over, I had to leave my mom's house because it was just too much. I had to go and I rebooted my life. I lived in a motel room for nine months before I got my first apartment and I was being helped, I was helped out. And I kind of did the same process here, but instead of staying at a motel, I'm at a woman's shelter. It's just been um, very overwhelming being here. Uh, it's positive, but just overwhelming because it's, I feel like I'm at a resort. <laughs> I can shower, I can sleep, I have privacy and it's, it's not bad. But this woman that um, told me to fuck off, I'm like, that's, it's scary to be able to talk about boundaries and being able to say, this is as far as I can go with you. And to be honest, if I were to have met her prior to this shelter and saw her on the streets, I would have never approached her because her look is very intimidating. It's um, very rugged, and um, it was, um, I would have said, I would have never approached her, but because she was next door to me on my first day, we were in a room with about 50 women. It was, we had a bunkhouse, and she's still in the bunkhouse, but everybody around us, the original people, they all got to move. There's like, I think two people left still in the bunkhouse. Or actually no, three people left in the bunkhouse area. And when you're in the bunkhouse, when it first starts off is you assess everybody that's there. Their goal is to, um, to help you declutter your life. There is a too bad minimum to be there. And there's a lot of women who did not have that, where they had more, be excessive. And when you're there, it's kind of like the trade and barter. Here, this doesn't fit me no more. Here, you look like this could fit you and this, that, and the other. I came with a two bag minimum and my dog. And I was getting clothes and everything. And today, I went outside to walk my dog and I saw a van out in the parking lot. And I said, is this a van for church? I'm not a church goer, but I was like, what's this van for? And they say, oh, this is for the boutique. And I go, oh, I've heard about this. And this is from the woman that told me to fuck off. The boutique is a place where you can get free stuff, shoes, underwear, socks, clothing, all for free. Everything's brand new. Everything is available. So it's not used things. They had a couple used, they had like a couple hand-me-down things, but the underwear, the socks, and that type is brand new. And I went, I was, they're like, do you need stuff? I said, yeah, I only have four outfits. So they, they said, go bring your dog back into your dorm and come out and you can go. And I thought this boutique would be like down the road or something. No, it's, it's right behind me. You just have to go up the hill and around, but you can't just walk up there. I went in and I came out with about eight or nine outfits six pairs of socks, six pairs of underwear. I got new shoes and I'm very grateful for that. I have my first ever pair of Nikes for free. So I think that's pretty cool. And right now I look like I'm about ready to go on a run because I'm wearing like a Boston Strong shirt and capris. They're like, are you a runner? And I go, no, I don't run, I'm a walker. I walk with my dog and here, I've been averaging like 10,000 steps to, yesterday I did 15,000 steps. And I have multiple sclerosis, so me walking that distance is a big deal. It's progression. And for the past five years, I would only go outside to get the mail or to go out once a week for groceries, and that was it. 
I stayed in the home. I was working on myself, but I had major anxiety and depression. As soon as I stepped in the, the park the day before I came here, my depression went away. I was at peace. I'm like, what is this feeling? I should be scared, overwhelmed, woesy woesy me, but I'm at peace. I'm happy. I feel content. Everyone's like, oh yeah, you feel that way because everything's free. No, I'm, I'm not worrying about where I'm going to rest my head, where, what I'm going to be doing, where I'm going to eat, where I'm going to take a shower. The basic needs are already met. And all the women here, they're not focused on where am I going to sleep, where am I going to eat, what am I going to do. They're focused on why they got here. And when you're focused on why you got here, you want to fight back. There's a woman here who got abused by her husband and knocked her teeth out, abused her for five years, and now she's divorcing him. She went from California to here and she's divorcing him. So she's getting shit done and she got a job too. So I'm, the one thing that got me here is COVID. COVID made me lose my apartment. It made me lose my business. I can't go after a virus. What am I gonna do, right? I can't, I can't do that. So I have to be able to reboot my life and to make things better. And telling people about my service. And what my service is, is helping women who have been through trauma, stress, anxiety, depression, abuse, and wanting to start over and rebuild their life and help declutter their life physically, mentally, emotionally, financially, and all in between. That's my job. And for the last five years, I've been building that business. I actually went on um, blog talk radio, local radio here in Reno in 2019. I've done, I've helped thousands of people and I've been all over social media for the past five years. And then when COVID happened, everything stopped. Nobody had money, everything was different. So I used 2020 as a relaxation, but also to write my story. And I wrote my story, but it still needed more stuff. So for the past two years, I've been documenting what has happened since 2020 and before. And I've been, in November last year is when I got evicted, I've also been, um, sorry about that, city life. <laughs> That's part of it. Um, and the fact that I can't edit <laughs> right now. Ambulance. Um, I just lost my train of thought, damn it. And the wind's picking up. Um, so, I'm trying to reboot my business and helping people get where they need to go. And I really want to to make this happen so that way because they are they're helping me get my apartment. I need to make sure that I have the income to be able to keep it. I can choose whatever I want to cho to charge for my service. And the people who I need to help don't have a lot of financial to be able to to get the help they need. I could charge a hundred dollars for my service but the people who I know I tried it and the people who can pay for a hundred dollars don't really need my help. They're pretty much managed. I've tried fifty dollars. I've tried fifty dollars and it wasn't what I wanted. So I thought five dollars per question five dollars per area one question at a time because i tried 10 questions with people and it was too much i tried five questions it was still too much so i do one question per person and it's five dollars per question and what happens is i do it all by electronic um, by email and you send me the first area that you need to work on for yourself whether you've been abused, trauma, you want to be able to reboot your life, tell me the area that you want me to focus on the most for you. 
and I will come back with a bunch of information and guidelines and steps for you. Tips, tricks, ideas, advice that comes from right here in my heart and my soul to be able to help you along the way. I've been homeless. I'm currently in between homes. I'm not homeless, but in between homes. And I'm grateful for it. But people will still say I'm homeless, so it's up to you to decide what you feel. Um, thank you all so much for your continued love and support. And set those boundaries because when you start putting boundaries up, people are going to tell you to fuck off. People are going to tell you you're being an asshole for cutting people off. But you're like, no, these are limits. I have my reasons and they're going to try to throw it back in your face. If I say, I told her, you know, I couldn't get you your cheeseburger because they were out, but I would have if they had it. But she's like, oh, you're just not a good friend. Right. <laughs> Keep saying that to yourself. The woman that I gave a Cinnabon to, chips, orange juice, and we've helped each other out. And she turned her back against me because I set limits just because she got money. And she got like $400 today. So she's like, fuck off to everybody. I guarantee you that money is going to disappear faster than she got it. So set those boundaries. That's a good thing. Set those boundaries. In the description of this video, if you want the full story, my package deal, $10. Yep, $10. My package deal is this. It's um, my full story. When everyone knows my story and then they get my service, they feel confident about trusting me and understanding that we both walked the same shoes and the same, we walked the same mile. Um, it has my full story. There's also a link to my Facebook group where it has over 600, um, 600 members and you get a link for that and you get the link for my service, which is $5 per question. So if you would like that in the description, is it's available. I also have the Hero Fund. The Hero Fund is very special to me because this money is not going to go to me. This is going to go to this facility as a thank you for allowing me to sleep here, eat here, and shower and use the bathroom and the facilities and the resources for free. I would like to leave here on a good note and donate and say this money is for this place to put wherever it's needed. Get the get better food here, um, have better vegetarian options, um, more more stability in that area and essentials for the women here like soaps, shampoos, things like that. The little things, you know. So the Hero Fund is also going to be in the description. That money is going to be 100% given to this facility as a thank you for providing the help I need and for others too. Thank you all so much. Please like the video, share the video, and I'm trying to get Jeffrey Dean Morgan's attention to this because my story has the ability to be a movie and I would like Jensen Ackles to direct it. All the information is at the end of my story for the actors and actresses and all that. So if you can tweet this to Jeff, that would be great. Thank you all so much. God bless.